In this video, we're going to look at applying the guidelines that we talked about in the first video to actual a portion of scripture, a portion of Bible study. But as we talked about in the first video, this concept of claiming the promises of God's Word, let's go ahead and just have a short word of prayer asking for God's guidance. Father in Heaven, I just ask that you send the Spirit of Truth to guide us as we study your Word. We just ask for wisdom and understanding, and we claim these promises in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, a few years ago, um, I learned about these principles that I shared with you in the first video of Bible study. And I came across some people, some people I respect uh, greatly, that were telling me a specific verse in the Bible, Colossians 2.2, says that God is a mystery and you can't know him. But I, I've already have seen text in the Bible. Um, um, for example, this one in Jeremiah 25, verse 7. It says, And I will give them a heart to know me, and I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. And there's text like... Uh, John 17, uh, verse 3, where Jesus is praying to his Father, praying for his disciples, saying, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. So this idea that God is a mystery seems to be a, a conflict with some other verses in the Bible that I've read that says we can know God, that he wants us to know that, him, that he wants to have a relationship with us. And so I I decided I needed to study these texts. Uh, I needed to study to find out, is it true that Colossians 2.2 says God is a mystery and you can't understand him? Or is there another explanation that um, clears up this apparent conflict between different verses in the Bible? So what we're going to do is work on applying these Bible study principles or guidelines to this text in Colossians 2.2 2, to see exactly if we can determine is God a mystery? Can we know him? Or does there some other meaning in that text? We're going to start by examining Colossians 2 verses 1 and 2. This is the verse I was telling you about. It's found in Colossians 2.2. 2. We're going to be reading uh, verses 1 and 2. Uh, starting in verse 1. For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. In verse 2 here, people see this... Uh, Four little words here, the mystery of God. And they use this text to say that God is a mystery and that you can't understand him. But these words don't say God is a mystery. It says the mystery of God. And if we take the time to read the words that are written on the page, notice what it says. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, unto all the riches. There's a value in this, or wealth in this, wealth in this, of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. So Paul is saying he wants them to understand, to have the full assurance of understanding of the mystery of God, the full assurance of understanding of the Father and the full assurance of understanding of Christ. So how can you say that God is a mystery and you can't understand him when Paul is saying he wishes them to have the wealth of the full understanding of these things? So let's apply our second principle, reading it in context. And that means we're going to be going to the chapter before this in Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to be reading a little bit here just to get it in context and uh, try to understand how this might relate to the verses that we just read. 
starting in verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery, which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to, ha to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Notice in verse 26, the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches or the wealth of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And the reason behind this in verse 28, he says that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Let's continue on to back to uh, Colossians 2 and continue to read. For I would that you know that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. So here, here's what Paul is saying. This mystery of God does not mean that God is a mystery. Paul instead, instead is saying that God is the owner of a mystery. And he wants to have them to have the full assurance of understanding. And that mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, let's continue on in our study of this to make sure that what we're seeing is a, a correct understanding. So next, let's do a word search, a Bible word search on this word mystery, and let's see what we can come up with. This is the uh, Bible software that we're going to do the word search on. This particular software is called eSword, E-Sword. It's a free download online if you are interested in some Bible software. There are other free versions of the uh, Bible software out there as well. This is just the particular one that I uh, tend to use. So what we're going to do is go to Colossians chapter 2, 2, and we're going to highlight this word mystery. I'm going to copy it. And in this um, little binoculars, it's the search symbol. And it will automatically put your search word in here. And it comes up with 22 verses. And you'll notice that all these verses are happen to be in the New Testament. Apparently the word mystery is not used in the Old Testament. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all these verses and I'm going to paste them into uh, my study notes. And I'm just going to click OK on this. And you here is a section for study notes. And it looks like I missed the M here on Mark. So um, what I suggest you do is that um, you look up every one of these verses to see what this word, how this word mystery is used in it and see if it will give you any information about the particular text we're studying in Colossians 2.2. 2. Um, as with every scripture that you study in the Bible, read the verses before and after to give a, a better understanding of the context that it's written in. Let's just pick a couple of verses here. Let's look at Romans 16, 25. And what it says here is, Now to him that is the power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scripture of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations, for the obedience of faith. So you can see just by reading this, this has something to do, this is just ter um, 
said in a different way, but basically is repeating what we read in Colossians chapter 1 at the end of the chapter, which talks about this mystery which was hidden from the ages, which was revealed to the saints. And this mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's go to another text in Ephesians. Um, let's do Ephesians 3.3. 3. And again, this is Paul speaking. In verse 2, it says, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which has given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, but is now revealed unto his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit. And goes on to talk about that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So again, this is along the same lines. It, it uses some different words and it actually adds more understanding um, what uh, the scripture in Colossians 1, chapter 1 and chapter 2 are talking about. So what I suggest you do is look up every single one of these verses that we found through this uh, word search and determine whether or not they have anything to do, to do with the subject that we're uh, studying. If they do, you know, put them all in the same location. In these study notes, you can delete things that don't apply. And um, you can add things as well if you want to add things that didn't come up in the search. But I suggest you study each verse. Now, not all of them are going to probably have to do with the subject we're studying, but probably uh, quite a few will. And this is just one way we can gather more information about this verse in Colossians 2.2 2 that talks about the mystery of God. Now, so far from our study, I think we can say that it's not really saying God is a mystery, but maybe that God is the owner of a mystery that Paul has been, that's been revealed to Paul, that he's revealing through his preaching of the gospel to everyone that, that will listen to him. And so in Colossians 2, 2, it says that he wants them to have the riches or the the wealth of knowing the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the, uh, acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. So he wants everybody to have this understanding. And um, we're not going to stop the study here. We're going to... Um, continue with some of the other guidelines we talked about in the first video and continue to search. But this um, should be a good place for you to start. Um, and uh, I would recommend you look up all these verses and study them and and um, see how they apply to this particular verse that we're studying. Until we do the next video, I, I wish you God's continued blessing as you study his word.